family and, family fellow, soldiers, and fellow soldiers, I'm the professor, I'm the professor and, and this is the, this moment, is of the truth. moment of truth. Um, um, as that package as that details, package President, details Biden, President Biden uh, heads, uh, into, the heads into the new year with some, with some pretty, pretty negative momentum, pretty, pretty low pretty poll low numbers, poll real numbers, questions, real questions uh, and on the Democratic uh, base about his handling of the war. Some, some good news on the economy, on the economy but hasn't really broken hasn't really through, broken through yet. yet. As we take a as step we back and we're back, about we're to enter an election year, year, how do you see things? Oh, that moment when you realize the propaganda ain't working. Well, I think it's wide open. I think Trump could win. He could win in Pennsylvania. I can see him growing. I can see the minority vote slopping off a bit. The women, of course, and the burbs can decide the thing on abortion rights. A real opportunity there to vote. I think the thing that Biden has to do is he's got to enlarge the youth vote and the minority vote. He's got to say to people, here's why you vote. MSNBC is going real heavy with the cope as the election cycle grinds on. On. I mean, when you I mean, dig when Chris, Chris Matthews, Matthews of all people out of mothballs so that he can talk, so about, he can the talk about the election, that's how you, that's know, how you know you're in know trouble. You're in trouble. The voters the here, voters when you talk, talk to them, to them right, right, the things that the they, things think, they about think about the most, the most or the fact that the kind of quote unquote black agenda, things like voting rights, police reform, things that disproportionately impact African Americans in this country, kind of got laid by the wayside, right? And that's not all Biden's fault, right? That is Congress's problem. There are all there's a filibuster in the Senate, but voters don't care about that. And I think what what voters haven't heard from President Biden and Vice President Harris just yet is what does the next the next four years actually look like? For this segment on Morning Schmo, I mean Joe, they bring on this guy Eugene Daniels. By the way, has anyone checked to see if he's related to Lee Daniels? I'm just asking for a friend. Every time he starts talking, he's nothing but gibberish. MSNBC frequently has this guy on, and they make it seem as if he's some sort of contributor making some sort of contribution. He just sounds like someone who has one small tidbit of an idea to say, and then he needs seven minutes to say it. He has no special knowledge, not even any stats to quote. What gives? He supposedly works for Politico, but I can't imagine why. There's absolutely nothing that's ever come from his mouth that's even been memorable. Though I do recall that every time he shows up on air, he makes sure to show off his painted fingernails. Now, this guy was talking about the same empty, stale talking points as the Democrats, but also you notice how he said this was the black agenda. That's how you described it. The kind of quote unquote black agenda, things like voting rights, um, police reform, things that disproportionately impact African Americans. Voting rights, police reform. He said that was the black agenda. Voting rights, voting rights, all that means all that is vote, means for, the vote for the Democrats. And police reform, and police reform which, means which means we have these racist, racist murders, murders with badges get sent to a civil rights museum, museum after they kill a black person. Black person. Everything, Everything that he says was approved, was approved of by the Democratic, by the Democratic, National, Democratic Committee. National Committee. All of it just, talking, of it just, points just talking points Taylor made Taylor to not offend the white moderates read casual racist. He claims that these are things that people are talking about. Family, we've been here before. Four years ago when Biden was running for president, he was forced to make actual promises to black people, black people, like his like Lift his Every lift Voice plan, plan, and his White, White House Police Accountability House Commission, Commission, and supposed to be a George Floyd Policing Act, and a John Lewis Voting Act, Voting Act, and a whole, bunch of, whole bunch of other stuff. Just out of curiosity, Just out of curiosity whatever, whatever became of any of those? Of any of those? As soon as the as white media the white announced media that Biden announced had won Biden the election, election, he immediately, immediately said, said he wasn't going to do the Police do Accountability, Accountability Commission. Commission. He said that he, he didn't have time, time and that Congress, Congress should handle it instead. instead. So he so ran he on that ran promise. promise. He won the he presidency won the with that promise. that promise. But he had no but idea had no that idea he wouldn't he have time for it. And there's absolutely no excuse for Eugene Daniels not mentioning Biden's broken promise about that White House level Police Accountability Commission. After all, it was Daniels' employer, Politico, who who reported on it. But I guess Eugene I guess Daniels, Daniels doesn't, doesn't read his own, his own website. website. All you Biden bots Biden out there, can you say can bait and switch? Bait and switch? Or better yet or for better yourselves, yet for can you say you suckers? Say suckers. And, as and as for voting rights, rights that's, a, that's trick a trick bag. The Democrats', the Democrats definition of voting rights means rights to allow illegal aliens, illegal aliens to vote. vote. That's, that's where they're going with this. Black people are able to vote now, regardless of the Republicans' feeble, pathetic attempts to put stumbling blocks in our path. The problem is not that black people haven't been registered to vote. We already are. The problem isn't that black people don't have access to voting stations. We know how to elbow our way into the proceedings. We did it three years ago and handed Biden the White House and handed the Democrats control of the House and the Senate. We handed it to them on a silver platter. We did that. So the problem isn't black people being able to vote. The problem is we're tired of voting for nothing. 
That's the problem. That's the problem. And if the white and media, the white was, media honest, was honest, that's what all that's of their all programming, their programming about, about Biden's, Biden's black, black voter, voter problem, problem would be about. about. Instead, Instead, we got this Eugene, got Eugene Daniels, Daniels guy sitting, sitting here saying, saying the GOP is filibustering. filibustering. That's, the that's the issue. Gee, did G, Republican did filibusters block the Asian hate crime law? Did Republican filibusters block the national gay marriage law? Or did the GOP vote for both of those things? When it comes to everyone else, the Democrats bring results. But when it comes to black people, on cue, we hear the same old, it's the GOP, they're blocking us, there's nothing we can do, now go and vote for us. So even if Biden began giving lip service to voting rights, that would be irrelevant to us. And even if he began giving lip service to police reform, I would ask, what has he done since he made that promise back in 2020? And of course, and of Eugene, course Daniels Eugene Daniels says absolutely says nothing about reparations. about reparations. Now, why now, didn't he why mention didn't reparations? Well, as I've told you, reparations is like truth, like truth serum. serum. It would be it such would a be big such and disruptive, and disruptive policy, policy, everybody, everybody is, forced is forced to have to declare, declare where they stand, where they stand on, on it. it. There's nobody There's who just nobody shrugs just their shoulders, shoulders and says, and says meh, meh. But as I've told you, if you got some Negro who's terrified to talk about it because they have some non-black co-workers they don't want to get on the wrong side of, their primary interest is in not displeasing others. They could care less about their own Empowerment. empowerment. And then you have those, you other, have those Negroes other Negroes who are in relationships, are in relationships with non-black, non-black people. people. Their primary, their primary terror, terror is in losing is their interracial, interracial sexual, sexual access. access. Here Eugene, Eugene Daniels, Daniels is, in the New York, in the New York Times, Times no less, with, with his, his white, white partner. partner. Reminds me of another Reminds MSNBC, MSNBC fixture, fixture, Jonathan, Jonathan putting, putting on his cape heart. He also was featured in the New York Times with his zaddy. The white media wants their bootlicks to fit a certain profile. So they stick to the stock sanctioned safe language that the DNC tells them to say. And in the process, the process, they become they part, become of, the part of the problem. Black people black who people refuse, refuse to speak up for black interests, interest, who intentionally and deliberately and misrepresent, misrepresent the black agenda black as agenda being voting as rights or abortion or student or loans, loans when the agenda, the agenda is and has is always been always reparations. Been reparations. Money, money for us. For us. But of course, but of Eugene, course Daniels Eugene Daniels wasn't Daniels alone. Was alone. When the white media's got its back against the wall and they're really they're desperate really to sell the soap, soap, they always make sure to have on multiple bootlicks. Boot they usually come in pairs like butt like cheeks. Butt cheeks. So, up so up on deck, you got, deck, you got Al Sharp. Al Sharp. Isn't it their uh, task to tell people to vote for their interests? It's not about Biden or Trump. It's about you. Do you want the right to choose? Do you want voting rights? Do you want uh, student debt loans forgiven? Do you want to see a police reform? Vote for yourself, and therefore you have to vote for Biden. Someone should tell Al Sharpton that we are voting our interests for the first time in a very long time. And since the Democrats are not putting our interests on the ballot, none of their candidates are representing our interest on the ballot, we have no interest in voting for them. Now, Al Sharpton was at that phony reparations committee signing in New York last week, and yet here he is just a few days after that on MSNBC, and the subject is why black voters are not enthused about voting for Biden, why clearly black voter turnout is trending downward. And he doesn't say even one word about reparations reparations, or about any money for us us, or legislation legislation specifically specifically for us. us. By the way, on a side note, Joy Reid said said that anyone talking about reparations is a Russian bot. Remember when she said that? Since Al Sharpton was at a reparations committee signing, I wonder if she'll call him a Russian bot now. I'm just asking for a friend. See, the white media thought that this reparations thing would go away after the 2020 election. They thought that their A-dunce cronies and other bootlicks would dispel the energy. But they didn't. But they didn't. We're, still, We're here, still here, still pushing still the boulder up that, hill. up that hill. So since so we didn't since get we didn't tired, tired and we haven't and moved, we haven't on, moved from on from this issue, issue they're, they're instead trying to co-opt the issue altogether, issue altogether, to take it over, take it over and, redefine and redefine it so that they can so invalidate it. Al Sharpton, Al Sharpton is part of this. Part of this. He talks about he talks abortion, about which abortion, is mostly which done is mostly as a sop to white female, female voters, and student, and student loan, loan debt forgiveness, forgiveness which, which also mostly benefits white, white women. He doesn't connect, he doesn't reparations, connect reparations, reparations to black voter to turnout, voter doesn't, turnout doesn't, doesn't even mention it, because he knows because the white knows media the white he works for doesn't want to promote that idea at all. Not because it wouldn't win elections, but precisely because it would win elections. The problem is it would win it the wrong way by overturning the racial pecking order. The message that the white media has been hammering us over the head with has been crystal clear. clear. If black voters voters don't don't get back on that treadmill treadmill and vote for nothing, nothing, then we're in for a rude rude awakening if Trump Trump wins wins next year. year. And to that, I'll ask the same question that I asked in 2015 when Trump was running in the primaries. 
What is Donald, what is Trump, Donald going Trump going to do in the White House, White House that Obama, Obama hasn't, hasn't been allowing to happen, to happen all, along. all along? And the same, and the same applies, applies now. now. What is Trump's what is second, second term going, going to do that he wasn't he doing to us in his first, his first term? term. They, claim they claim that he's going to be enacting, enacting the kind of racist, racist policies, policies nationwide, nationwide that we've seen in places like Florida. Like Florida. Okay, okay, and here's my answer to that. What have Democrats done in Florida or anywhere else in America to push back against the race-baiting laws that trash like DeSantis have enacted? What have they done to declare war on the, war on the racist, racist right. right. Nothing. Nothing. So they're already, so they're letting, they're already letting these red state racists, racists, racists trample, trample on us. On the only difference is boot licks like Al Sharpton gets to have a TV show, show. and Eugene and Daniels gets Daniels to work gets for a white media, media website, website, and Jasmine, Jasmine Crockett, Crockett gets, gets to be in Congress. In Congress. This is all this about is all scaring us into improving their lives while they ignore ours. They know exactly what they're doing. What they don't know is whether or not it will work. Now, as I alluded to a moment ago, the white media is also trying to invent political stars out of whole cloth. Back in the spring, it was those two goofballs in the Tennessee legislature. And just in time for Christmas, they're trying to make Jasmine Crockett the next big thing, more like the next big nothing. I am so excited that my colleagues across the aisle care about sexual abuse, considering that the front runner right now for like presidency is kind of just been found, just been found liable, liable of sexual abuse. Sexual Every time abuse. we Every seemingly time have, we have a hearing on voting rights, rights, we talking about the fact that people, fact that people are cheating. So let's talk so about who's cheating. cheating. I got a few articles. articles. But when we start, when we start talking, talking about things that look like things evidence, things evidence, evidence, they want to act they like they blind. Like they, they don't know what this is. These are our national secrets. Looks like in the me. Yeah, keeping it classy. This is the kind of black woman that the white media approves of. It's supposed to be a democratic rising star. Loud, profane, quote-unquote sassy, and wrong. And notice how none of her white democratic colleagues had any problem with her asinine behavior. That's how you know they're the ones who put her up to it. She wasn't going off script with all that nonsense. She was doing exactly what they told her to do. This is the kind of black woman that they approve of having around themselves. This kind of sassy man. Like character. Like character. Another, bootleg Another bootleg who toes the party line, line and says nothing about our tangibles. About our tangibles. She's just She's so just eager so to be the next Kamala, Kamala Harris, you can Harris smell the desperation, desperation on her. Now, if being, now, like, if Kamala being like Kamala means that she'll be rejected, she'll be rejected by black by voters on a national on level national and level, crash and burn the second she runs for office outside the cozy outside confines, confines of her congressional, congressional district, district, then yes, yeah, she'll yeah, wind up just like Kamala. But if she thinks that that means she's going to be a senator or governor, and beyond that, no doubt, president, then she's an even bigger fool than we thought. But if she thinks that she's going to imitate Kamala's antics and get to the White House, she won't. Actually, Actually, this practice, this practice of, doing of doing all of this, all of this showboating, showboating and such, it didn't really begin with Kamala. Kamala. It actually, it began, actually with began with Barack Obama. Obama. He's the reason, He's we, the see the reason we see these fools keep doing, doing this. this. When Obama, when Obama won, won that Senate that seat back in 2004, it was, it was excruciatingly obvious, obvious he wanted to be president. To be president. He made, he made the predictable denials of this, denials of this and he said that he, he would complete his term as senator before senator seeking before higher office. Higher but the second John the second Kerry John lost the presidential Kerry race, Obama, Obama was, was immediately running, running around, around to every natural, natural disaster he could, he could like Hurricane, like Katrina, Hurricane Katrina, Katrina, and he made it a and point to get into bickering contests with every one of W's administration officials who appeared before him in the Senate, anything to get in front of those cameras. It was all unnecessary, and it didn't accomplish anything. He never really had a gotcha moment, though it did succeed in forcing his name into the the news cycle, which had been his had goal, been all, goal along. all along. Obama, Obama was the one who was pioneered, pioneered this technique of using those hearings as a soapbox, soapbox to get in some digs at the, at the opposition and by doing and by so doing get on the nightly so news or into the cable news cycle. News cycle. It began it with began him as far as the Democrats are concerned. So when Kamala Harris got into the Senate years later, she did the exact same things, constantly pretending to be outraged at Trump administration officials who appeared before her in the Senate. And now we have Jasmine Crockett, who at this late day is still, is still trying, trying to run against, to run against Trump, Trump, even Trump, though Trump's not in the White, not House. In White House. She has no, she charisma, has no charisma, no real no intelligence, and no credibility. And no credibility. Though, she though she does have a raggedy have a weave, weave, so there's that. So there's that. Here, she Here she is, is doing, doing anything, anything, to, get anything to get the white media, media to, cover to cover her. She begins she cursing begins in Congress because, because that's because putting that's her best foot forward, I suppose. But this is who the white media is trying to big up next. This self-interested, self-promoting egomaniac. White power creates these creeps, then uses their media monopoly to push these puppets on us, and all they do is say the opposite of what the black community actually says.
clowns. And then you got then clowns you got like Roly like Poly Martin, Martin amening, their, amening every their every stupid utterance. Stupid utterance. This, is what, this is what white power specializes, power specializes in, in, creating, creating these, these closed, closed loops of corruption, of corruption where, they where they control the entire process of spreading and validating lies meant to control us. I told you about how the white right does it with the hysteria about critical race theory. Wealthy white conservatives use their money to pay crisis actors to go to these school board meetings. They claim to be parents when many of them don't even have children and a lot of them don't even live in those districts. And yet they make sure the local media is there so that they can see them screaming and yelling and threatening the school board members. See, normally nobody covers school board meetings because they're drop dead boring. But these outrageous stage displays are guaranteed to get covered. Then these wealthy conservatives pay racist provocateurs like Christopher Rufo to be their mouthpieces, falsely claiming that the kids in school are being indoctrinated and white and students white are being students discriminated, are being discriminated against. against. He has no proof has of no this. Proof he just he thinks just that he thinks says it and we're supposed to believe it. Then they pay then Fox, they pay Fox News, News to report to these report phony school board school protests. Board protests. And, then and then these wealthy conservatives, conservatives have the Republican have politicians, politicians in Congress, in Congress or, in or in the state legislatures who they give big campaign, campaign donations, donations to, to vow to write legislation to attack anything woke, which is a euphemism for black. It's all an assembly line, or rather like a stage play. And all of these people try to pretend as if they, they have nothing have in common with each other, with each other. As, if as if they're not in cahoots, when the reality, when the reality is, is they're all puppets, they're all puppets on, strings on strings to the same to the sick same puppet sick masters. masters. None of it is, None of it is natural, natural or spontaneous. Or spontaneous. They're, all they're all involved from the phony the parents, parents to Rufo to the cable network, network to the politicians, to the politicians all of them all on of these wealthy these white conservatives' payroll. It's a process of propagandizing the public, and they control every step of that process. That's why you need the black media. Before we came along, nobody was talking like us. Nobody else is linking reparations directly to the black vote either. I personally have made sure to remind you for the last three years of Biden's broken promises because I've observed politics since I was a child. And in all my decades of observation, the one thing I've noticed is black people keep hearing the same promises every election cycle, but nothing is ever actually done. Done. And then with and the, next, then election, the next election, rinse, rinse and, repeat. and repeat. Human beings Human are creatures, beings of, habit, creatures of habit, and we have the ability, have the ability to, adapt to adapt to even the harshest of circumstances. Of circumstances. This, ability this ability is one of our strongest, our strongest traits, traits, but it's also our, it's also greatest, our greatest weakness, weakness in that we can become we can acclimated, acclimated to oppression, oppression to the point that we stop we fighting it, because, because we've adapted to it. To practice becoming adapted to abusive conditions is no measure of strength. Adapting to hardship should be a temporary thing, not permanent. This is how the powerful use our own, our own psychology against, psychology us. against us. And then they have then some they paid bootlegs to tell us that we're not, that we're being, not manipulated. being manipulated. Well, over here over in the black here, media, the black we're all about breaking, breaking their, programming. their programming. We're all we're about all mind, about control, mind control, control, teaching you teaching to control, control your mind. Your mind. The, white the white media is coping media hard as they realize they all the scare, scare talk about Trump, about Trump doesn't seem doesn't to be seem working, to be working, particularly with black voters. They're still hoping that at some point, though, just keeping up a steady drumbeat, sometime next year, black people will simply lose our resolve, throw up our hands, and resign ourselves to our fate as we vote for nothing once again. That's what the plan is. That's what hoping for. They can't, they can't conceive, conceive that black voters, black voters will do what we did in 2016, 2016 when we let Hillary, we let Hillary swing, in the wind. swing in the wind. But history, but history seems, seems poised, to poised to repeat itself. And for our and sakes, for our it, had it had better. The days of the taking days us for granted, for granted have, to have to end. The days of the talking days around, around our interests have, interest have to end. The days of the days lying of about what we're demanding have to end. And if these white media suckers think that Biden having a photo op with Obama or having bought and paid for tools repeating the same old talking points is going to magically, magically trick, us, trick us, then they're then the they're ones the who are in for a rude awakening. Rude awakening. Good, day Good day and be and one. one. I'd like to take a like moment to, to mention some of our contributors. Anthony Pollard, Anthony Pollard Antithesis, Antithesis Dondi Waddell, Waddell Gordon, Gates, Gordon Gates and Prince Ali Ahmed, Prince Ali Ahmed. Salute, to salute to them and thank you to everyone, everyone for listening, listening liking and sharing, and sharing this, this message. message Black Empowerment, Black Empowerment only, only exists because of you, because of you.